Adam ruins everything. Namely, correct information. Let's roll the first clip. Every four years, we hear the words electoral college over and over again. But we never talk about what a ridiculous and, frankly, undemocratic system it really is. Oh, okay. Undemocratic. This is, this is the crux of the argument against the electoral college, right? It's undemocratic. Yes. <laughs> People, like, like they fooled. No, that's by design. Let's start with this. Okay, the Marley. Marley was dead to begin with. The United States has never been. A democracy and that's important because if you understand it you look through that prism you'll understand why the electoral college is necessary these are just a, a bunch of quotes that you have from some of the founding fathers or signers talking about how pure democracy is evil it's one of the greatest evils Benjamin Rush wrote because pure democracy is mob rule pure democracy is that the, the mob of the majority can infringe on the rights of the minority now I know that leftists love to act as though they're there to help minorities but uh, not when it comes to the electoral college not when it comes to someone over in, in, in flyover state so that is the reason for the electoral college we are a constitutional representative republic we are not a democracy so if you understand that well then the rest of this is irrelevant but most people don't understand that and so there needs to be more convincing you let's go to the next clip the electoral college gives vastly more power to different voters depending on which state they live in Bigger states. Nope, smaller states. If your state has less people, you have more power. Yeah. Let's, let's keep going. Let's go to the next clip. Not too many people live in Wyoming, but they have three electoral votes, or one for every 135,000 voters. California is packed with people, but they have 55 electoral votes, or one for every 411,000 voters. Okay, so they try and show percentage-wise that there are, there's more representation with Wyoming. But even if you look at it, three votes to 55 with California, it's pretty minute. Let's bring up another clip from everyone's favorite founding father, Hamilton. Let's bring up the Hamilton quote from Federalist Paper 68. The big reason for this is because you can't just have people pandering to a few big cities. Uh, let's stop by New York, D.C., Los Angeles, San Francisco, Detroit in the 50s, promise them a bunch of stuff, wrap this up and go home. So the whole reason to try and balance that power is because I know of these crappy states that you think of as flyover states, we'll continue and we'll get to that, like Wyoming, they can't have their vote drowned out by people who are corralled in the big cities. I've talked about this a lot. This is why leftists want you in big cities. They want you on public transport. They want you to be uh, dependent on government services. They want you to think it's a sense of community robbing from your brother through taxes and bigger government. That's why they want you in big it cities. It sounds so nice. It sounds so nice. But God, why, Wyoming Easy. shouldn't matter as much. Let's get to the next clip. Hello, America. I'm Adam Conover, and I'm running for president of Florida, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. And boy, do I love Florida oranges, Philadelphia cheesesteaks, and whatever you people like in Ohio. The rest of the country can go suck a big one. Hi, America. I'm running for president for Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Virginia. Swing states change, you dumbass. Swing states change. That's the whole point. Swing states don't say the same. As party flat platforms change, as the principles change, you see that with Donald Trump. He's shaken up the whole map. Let's roll this final clip because I think it's relevant, and then we'll, we'll wrap this up. Thank you for the information. I cannot believe our beautiful system has become so messed up. Oh, no. The Founding Fathers designed our system this messed up. <laughs> He is right. The Founding Fathers did design it this way. And you have a lot of stupid people. They don't understand that we're not a democracy, that we're a constitutional republic. The Founding Fathers, they spent more ink on this than any other branch of government. This was unbelievably important to them. The old quote on democracy is it's basically two wolves on deciding which lamb to eat for dinner. I'm butchering that, but that's the quote on democracy. Listen, swing states matter now. They campaign there strategically because these are actually generally areas of middle America, places that would be underrepresented if not for the Electoral College. Really, what would you do? New York, D.C., Los Angeles, San Francisco, Francisco, uh, Detroit back in the 50s where you promised a bunch of union handouts, Chicago where you cater to the union thugs, and then all of a sudden, next thing you know, people in South Dakotas are paying for some guy in Los Angeles to take a dump in a tranny designated bathroom. That's what we don't want to happen. We don't want to burden the rest of the country with values that not only do they not share, but are unconstitutional. Right, that we're so far away from federalism, and this is why we have term limits. This is why representatives are selected, or you know, depending what you're talking about, legislatures. Right, it's it's a representative republic. We should have terms. We should be changing these politicians regularly. But their job is to represent people and make decisions, not simply to go, all right, put everything to a popular vote. That's the Bernie Sanders. Well, democratic socialism doesn't change what it is. Democratic slavery isn't any better. Democratic. I don't know, cheating at POG. The point is, just because people vote for something, it doesn't make it okay. Intellectual diversity, constitutional conformity, that's the electoral college.